people that listen to my records think that I, I just uh, write about bars and prostitutes and uh, liquor. I, I've tried to cover a, a wide variety of different types of subject matter. I went up to Napa for a, we call it a musical summit. You'll never know just how much I care. We talked about uh, the fact that he wanted most of the music written before he uh, started shooting. I would like to present to you to Mr. Be. Tom uh, to Waits. Appear. Tom, Tom Waits, ladies Mr. And Tom Waits, Waits sitting next to Mr. Waits is Mr. Bone Tao. And we have Mr. Richard Beggs. <laughs> the way to start is to give us a lot to listen to. Let's throw out, you know, it, yeah, any idea absolute, that occurs absolute, to you, absolute, piano sketches and rough way. lyrics. That's why, as he says, keeping it fluid for as long as possible yeah. is the only way you can work. Well, the picture and the music, I think, are going to uh, trade off. Yeah. Like Francis said, sometimes the music is going to lead, and other times we're going to get a piece of music and picture together. It just isn't going to work. Then you call it a son of a bitch, and you beat it up, and you find out how strong it is, and if it wants to stay, you have to stand back and 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 dump on your own children, and uh, and find out if they're strong enough to want to fight back and stick around. So that'll happen with scenes and and music as well. Musical ideas began developing very, very soon, and in many ways, the intention would be that they would influence the style of the picture. I wonder who's kissing her now. I wonder who's showing. That's a beautiful song. Now. I wonder Music speaks alone. That's why I think that the holes where there's underscoring without any musical dialogue at all is just as important as the dialogue. Definitely, itself. the and silence, the silence is the orchestrated silence. as well. I'm working with an arranger on all of this, Bob Alcivar. We've been in the studio several times. So let me yeah. let me start moving. Yeah, yeah you go. Kind of and I'll a drunken kind of three, you. and then you... <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what you do. It'll help too if you move, you know, like okay. your arms and stuff. You know, okay. Just kind of. Then I'll, okay. uh, I'll just go with you. What we need is an attack on the note. Uh, okay. It's like uh, dancing. Uh, yeah, it's like dancing. Yeah. I've known Bones Howe since uh, 1974. He uh, went in the studio with me for my second record. So I've known him for seven years. He's um, engineering and producing uh, the music. I don't know how you feel about what you did, Tom. You want to do it oh, again? I'll do it again. We work very well together. He uh, certainly uh, keeps my confidence up in myself, which I need a lot. I was so insecure when I started, I had no idea that I would be capable of writing an entire score to a major motion picture, especially working for Francis. I was sweating bullets. What made this difficult to begin with was having to really conceptualize the whole idea of a male and a female singer and establish a relationship between the two in song. Simple addition, it keeps with tradition. Don't spend your wages on love. In spite of the bad days, each citizen always is maintaining that love is so grand. Take it for me. 
Jack. You don't get your feedback. The picture deals with male-female relationships. The idea was, OK, there's a male and a female singer, there's a male and a female lead. Didn't necessarily have to uh, follow the storyline of one from the heart. More like Zeus and Hera, uh, you know, in a way, uh, somehow peeking down to the clouds and commenting on the action in Vegas. Francis wants to uh, build some scenes around songs. Here comes the bride. And there goes the groove. So that it's uh, more hand and glove. Looks like a hurricane went through this room. You know, we're going to sing, we're going to talk, we're going to have the guy with the girl, the girl with the guy. We're going to give all the possibilities. You know that they love each other. And yet, here they are with these terrific new people that you know they much more enjoy. So we really, by the end of this sequence, we really pose an incredible dilemma, which is, you know, what's going to win out, true love or the promise of fantasy? With the music, he, he wanted really a, more like a glass of music. And then they have a glass of lights and, and all of these different beverages. Uh, there and he can start to mix like a wizard. I call this used colada. Help. Well, I guess it's as good a place as any. My original idea for used Carlotta was going to be uh, like a, a whole wrecking yard. Uh, we'd have maybe uh, 135 different automobiles in, uh, partially dismantled and damaged and crumbling, like organized noise. Uh, always wanted to hear what 135 car doors closing the same time would sound like. I thought it might be good for Hank's character. Give him a little bit of uh, madness. Uh, you're listening to see who's in tune, and, and so you, when someone sounds out of tune, you point to them again. Da 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 da. Then you tap it. This thing's it's flimsier than normal. A dipstick. The scene with Lila walking the tightrope seems they're both enchanting one another. Take Me Home is what uh, Tom calls a, a, I think he calls it a folk ballad. The melody is beautiful and the words are just gorgeous. That's really where my heart can lie within a song like that. Going into the studio with Tom and with everybody involved, it's very different than when I would normally go in at home. I enjoy it because uh, I love his music. It's easy to work with his music, you know, when you enjoy what you're doing. Right away. Yeah. Okay, right in there. So it sounds like a response, yeah. you know, or like she's finishing my sentence for me. Yeah. Subsequently, I've I thought it was just the pocket.
it's now. I think I need to, because we're in the high register that maybe it, I might have to go down. All right. Right. You may have to come down. All I've got is empty pockets, pockets now. In the various places where you harmonize, did you arrive at her always doing the low notes and you the high notes all the time? I just noticed that a number of times she took the she thing went, yeah. and not the melody. Okay. So maybe we'll explore that. All right. Okay. Orchestra. Yeah. Orchestra. The orchestra is blind. But I've never been. It's like the two people are sitting here, and you're saying, oh, yeah, you had a bad time. What about me? I met you. Francis will come into the, the, the session, the recording session, and he will put in thoughts that he wants within the music for his movie, and we try to interpret that. I spill myself another dream. I count the muscles. You know the part where she sings about the whiskers and the sink and stuff? Definitely. My instinct is that because kind of you got what your style is, mm -hmm. that on that she can, you know, kind of sing it full, not have to, you know, like a torch song, I mean, like real emotional. I spill myself oh, another no. dream. What's nice is that it all ends up with uh, kind of yeah. that you do love each other. And the Once Upon a Town line, is, as the melody has it, is very full and, and pretty. Oh, I think it works better for Francis dividing those up a line and piece. I like it too. Wow. I've never been involved within the framework of a movie. And I, I'm seeing what can go on. Do you want to do a little game just for the hell of it? Just for kicks. Okay. Oh, okay. Just say the lines to each other as though right. you're having a conversation. A scene. <laughs> say this, say oh yeah. All those. Say this. Oh, and all those two bit Romeo, two yeah. counterfeit romance. Yeah, like him. Oh, wow. The most interesting and unusual within everything, I think, is being able to work with both Tom and Francis. And to be able to do something very different. And this movie is that. As long as I. Have you? That's a good song. Da, 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 da.